Hello again. So last week we saw something we call rules for differentiation. So things like power rule, product rule, quotient rule. These were awesome because they gave us a way of calculating derivative of functions without having to evaluate the limits and the definition of the derivative. However, these were awesome rules, but they're not sufficient to calculate the derivative of arbitrary function. We need to explore more rules to be able to do that. For instance, if I look at the function square root of 1 plus x, this is a function that you saw last week in class, I think, and you calculated the derivative of this function using the definition, you got something like 1 over 2 square root of 1 plus x. This was great, but you had to use a definition to calculate that. And in fact, there's absolutely no way you can evaluate the derivative of this function using the rules that we know. This is not a product of function. It's not a quotient of function. It's not a power function. So you can't uh, really do it. In fact, one thing, by the way, that you should certainly not do is write something like this. This is wrong. This is definitely not true. I know this is a mistake that quite a few people do, but never ever do that. This is wrong. All right. And in fact, if you look at this function, square root of 1 plus x squared, which is a little more complicated, that's even worse. You, there's no way we can evaluate the derivatives using uh, the rules that we know. So to do that, we need something else, and it's called the chain rule. Now, this is probably one of the most important rules that you will learn for differentiation, and it's a little more complicated than the other one, so we have to make sure that you really understand it. So what it is about is to calculate the derivative of functions of functions. So if I take my capital F of x to be the function f, little f, of another function g of x, then the chain rule tells me that the derivative of the capital function is equal to the first the derivative of the outer function, little f, evaluated at the inner function, times the derivative of the inner function. So you start outside and you go inside. Right? In Leibniz notation, you could write the same thing as is just written here. Now, in words, this is exactly what I said, but you differentiate first the outer function first, you evaluate at the inner function, and then you multiply with the derivative of the inner function. All right, so I'm not going to prove this rule uh, in this video because the proof is a little involved. Uh, there's a proof in the textbook. I'm not uh, so keen of the proof that they present in the textbook, but you can also look at the Wikipedia page for chain rule. Uh, there's a, a nice proof there, or you can Google chain rule and you'll find tons of uh, different proofs online. So what we'll do is uh, use it in examples to make sure that we really understand how it goes. So let's go back to the example of a square root of 1 plus x squared. This is exactly the type of example where you need to use the chain rule, because this is a function, namely the square root of a function, which is the thing inside. So I could rewrite that as f of g of x, where my function f of u is just the square root function, and g of x is the thing inside, so 1 plus x squared. Indeed, if I write now f of g of x, what I get is f, which is the square root of g of x, which is 1 over x squared, which is indeed the function I'm started with. Right, so now to calculate the derivative, recall that this is, by the chain rule, this is f prime at g of x. Start at side, take the derivative, evaluate inside, multiply by the derivative inside. Now what is this? Well, the derivative of the outside function, my outside function is the square root. Now the derivative of the square root function is, from the power rule is just 1 over 2 times the square root. So I get 1 over 2 times the square root evaluated at the inner function, which is 1 plus x squared, times g prime of x. This is the derivative of the inner function, which is 1 plus x squared. So what do I get? Well, I still get the thing in front. And the derivative of 1 plus x squared, well, this is a sum of terms. I can take the derivative of the sum. The first one is just a constant, goes to 0. Second one is x2, so I get 2x for the derivative by the power rule. Now, simplifying the 2s, the final answer would be x over 1 plus x squared. Now, again, there's no way you could have gotten that just using the rules before. You really need to use the chain rule to be able to calculate this derivative. Let's do one more example. Suppose that I have my function to be sine of x squared. So again, this is a composite function, so a function of a function. The outer function is just the sine function, and the inner function in this case is just x squared. So f of g of x is sine of x squared. So by the chain rule, the derivative here will be 
Remember, first the derivative of the outer function evaluated at the inner function. So the outer function is sine, the derivative is going to be cosine by the previous video, evaluated at the inner function, which is x squared, times g prime of x, so the derivative of the inner function. Inner function is x squared, by the power rule the derivative is 2x. So this is my final answer, I could rewrite it like this, if I wanted to, to make it a little clearer. That is the derivative of sine of x squared. And let's do one last example, which is uh, might be confusing. So there's a difference between this and this, as I said in the previous video. This is sine of x squared. This is sine squared of x. So here what happens is that we're exchanging the inner and the outer function. So here if I write that as f of g of x, what happens is that the outer function in this case is the square, and the inner function is the sine. Right, because now f of g of x will be, well, f, which is taking the square of the inner thing, so that would be sine of x square, which is indeed what I have for my function. Okay, so now the derivative should be different from the previous example. So let's see. So the first part is to take the derivative of the outer function, evaluate it at the inner function. My outer function here is the square. Derivative of u squared is 2 times u. So 2 times the inner function, which is sine of x, times the derivative of the inner function. My inner function is sine of x. Derivative is cosine. And cosine of x, so in other words, 2 sine of x, cosine of x. Now you see that this is very different from the previous example. So the fact that here I have sine of x squared and here I have sine squared of x uh, gives me very different functions and they have different derivatives. Okay, so these are just three examples. We have uh, to get used to uh, the chain rule, you have to do a lot of exercises. We'll do some in class, but please have a look at the exercise in the textbook as well. And I, I want to mention a few things. So the chain rule is extremely, extremely important. In fact, we'll see in class that uh, the quotient rule that we saw is not really uh, independent from the product rule. In fact, combining the product rule with the chain rule, you can rederive the quotient rule. So if you ever forget the quotient rule, this low, the high, blah, 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 all you have to remember is the product rule and the chain rule, and you can always re-derive it. So we'll do that in class. You'll see it's pretty cool. But you can also use the chain rule to calculate things like uh, derivative of inverse functions. Um, I don't know. I mean, chain rule is like super, super important. So uh, please make sure that you understand how it goes.